past fatal heart impact, past painful scars. In fact, I blast tasteful bars and past I back up my actions. Back on mass, grab reactions, jack attack with every word and act with class as they hear me snap. I got nothing to lose, cause I fought and felt the bruise. Now I'm not the one confused, call the shots and they produce. I ain't lost, I'm finally loose. Pick a new so bird's juice. I need the views to boost me to a new abuse of being used. Everybody wants a peace now, y'all can rest in peace now. You're dead to me, so peace out. Remember you're discreet now. Get ready for the Alrighty. Hello, hello, everybody. This is Kiru Show here. And now, whenever we last left off with this series, we had Deku. And quite a bit of things have happened. Deku, he spent three and a half years trying to learn waterbending. Now, Deku found... He couldn't bend water. He's the Avatar, but he, he can't bend water. Now, Deku, he was able to master earthbending in just a few short years. There was airbending. That took him some time. Yeah, but that, that's kind of easy. It's not his natural born element. It was fire. There was water. It, it proved to be impossible. Deku, after spending a little over three years trying... With his training, he just gave up. He moved over to Earth, where it was proven that he could Earth bend. Now, Deku was very angry by this. He's the Avatar, but he's not living up to or following the traditional practice. If you're a born bender, you start in that cycle. Fire, air, water, then Earth. Or... If you're born an airbender, air, water, earth, then fire. It just doesn't make sense. Why was he different? Now, Deku, he also met the spirits of good and evil, Vatu and Rava, where he just was revealed that he wasn't really supposed to be the Avatar. It was an accident. Deku deciding that with everything going on, he's going to get some air outside, as he did go to sneak away. With that being said, we do currently have Deku, who he is actually walking the streets of the Earth Nation. He's been here for a few months, so he's somewhat familiar with this area. But at the same time, it's kind of strange. He is alone. For the first time in a while, he's just by himself. Now, Deku, he's kind of happy, but at the same time, he's also kind of scared. The people at the White Lotus, they don't usually let him do this. They don't let him venture out by himself for fear that the Avatar could be kidnapped, or possibly even killed. It's just, with today's technology, it is possible to kill the Avatar, but, you know, it would just be proven to be very difficult. Sure, handguns and rifles and stuff like that do exist but the avatar they've got to be stronger than those things right now Deku as he is walking around he does at least have some pocket money as he does actually try to follow the races he does see going on overhead there are gliders flying straight past them and Deku he actually does go to follow that way as Deku he does start to run through the crowd and follow the way those guys are heading. Now, Deku, he does eventually get to the place where the racers are flying back into the area to make a pit stop, let's just say. You do actually have where a man, he does actually stop Deku, asking exactly what he's doing. Mm -hmm. I, I want to see the, the gliders, the racers. Mm -hmm. Young man, do you have a ticket? Uh, what? A ticket. Uh, no, I don't. Young man, if you don't have a ticket, then you can't get in. But, but, okay, um, how much is it? Let's see. With the fact that here you can actually see everything going on, from actual individual fights the gliders do have, to actually tracking them, and even getting an overhead view, it's about $300. What? You, you can't be serious. Hmm? Kid, I'm extremely serious. It's my job. Inside this place right here behind me, 
you can see the entire race. You can see it from a certain race's perspective if you do choose to view it that way. So, you need to be aware. I'm just following the rules my boss has set out for me. And if I were to break those rules or even make an exception for anybody, I could lose my own job. Now, the man he does actually go to bring up his hand. As he does at least begin to start having flames burst through it, as he does inform Deku to step off. Now, Deku, he is annoyed. He doesn't have that much money. He only has at least 220 left. Or maybe even lower. He, he did buy something before he did come here. <sighs> he really probably shouldn't have had breakfast this morning. It's so pricey where they're staying, but it's so good. Now, nah. Deku, he does somewhat walk away angry. As you do actually wear somebody, they did actually notice that. They themselves were going to get in. They wanted to get in. They had to. And there actually is Deku. He seemed to be pissed off just as much as he was whenever he was just turned away. It's kind of funny. If they can use Deku as a distraction, then they can get in. So, they don't really feel bad about exploding the sky. Hmm, okay, let's see what we can do here. Now, the person they actually go walking over to Deku. As whenever Deku, he actually is trying to think about what to do, head back to the inn, and try to ask his mom for some extra money, a few ideas do come to mind. One, his mom... She would be incredibly angry that he left. The White Lotus would put him under tighter restrictions, locking key and everything. The fact is, he probably wouldn't be able to go by himself for months or even possibly years. <sighs> okay. Now, the person they actually go walking up to Deku. As they at least do try to tell him, it's been a while since they did see him. Deku, turning as a person, do immediately go to throw their arm directly over and onto him. And they actually go to somewhat squat down, informing Deku to play along. Well, what? Why? Who are you? Listen, dude. If you play your cards right with me, we can both get in and see that race, okay? Really? Yeah. Alright? Now just listen to me, okay? Now. Deku, he actually says, listen. As the person you at least go to stand back up straight, and inform Deku that they, knew they do need to get going. Since they're going to be late. And that the races, they really don't have time for that, remember? What? What is this person talking about? Yeah, sorry, it's just... I got kind of caught up. I just saw the guys flying overhead, and... I haven't seen a race before, you know? Oh, shit, this guy's good. Yeah, man, I do get it. You're new to the city, right? Yeah, I've been actually here for a while, but... I just see them all the time, you know? And this is my first time actually in the arena area. Hmm? Really? Yeah, it really is. I don't often get chances to come here alone, or even really be by myself. <laughs> Alright, well, let's go. Now, Deku, he does follow this person. The two walking away as they do round a corner, and the person they do immediately spin around and tell, informing Deku that he did pretty good. Hmm? What? Dude, your performance out there. Okay. I like the way you're doing that, okay? Whatever you're doing, just keep doing it, okay? Now, Deku, he's kind of confused. As the person to at least look around the corner and see that the guy, he's staring in the other direction. He's staring to the right. And the person that is with Deku, they actually know why he's doing that. Most people assume that if they come to the right, they might be able to sneak past his field of vision. So he does at least have to keep his head turned that way, since he is in fact partially blind in the right eye. Now, this is actually kind of intriguing, whenever Deku does hear about this. And that might explain why that guy didn't recognize him, or why this guy didn't recognize him. Okay, I have a few ideas as to how to get in. So, tell me, 
What type of bender are you? And me? Well, obviously, there's nobody else around. Uh, okay, uh, s sorry, I'm, um... Crap, crap, okay, I, I really shouldn't tell them the Avatar. I'm an Earthbender? Why did you say Earthbender? No. The person, they actually are kind of happy by that. Oh, thank God, you're a local. Uh huh? Yeah, you're a native to the nation, right? Yeah, I, I guess you could say that. Okay, perfect. So, the person leaning around the corner, informing Deku that the piece of earth right below him, he's going to need to bend it right up and send the guy into the air. Uh-huh. Wait, what? Yeah. Just go ahead and bend, okay? If we can send him flying, we can run right in, and I'll try and chase us down. What? Wait, he'll chase us down? Why would we do that? Uh, simple. He's going to try and find somebody outside here. He won't think to look behind him. Now, you do actually have where Deku, he does try to think about this. Looking around the corner. And he does try to get it positioned just right. Okay, get into a stance. And try to think. Now, Deku, he does try to think about this. He's been tempted ever since he was younger to look and see these specific races and then there's a chance to get it now the these things are way too overpriced okay um okay uh you got it you ready you're gonna do it shut up i need a minute now technically does get ready taking a deep breath before going to actually pull his hand, hands backwards it would have stomped down with his right leg now the moment that actually has happened, the guy, he actually has to go looking around. His head turning to the right, as a piece of earth does immediately come up right underneath him. Now, Deku, he didn't bend underneath the guy's feet. He bent in between them. And a piece of stone has come up and smash right into the family jewels. As the man, he doesn't really topple over forwards, going to bend down. As, yeah. Deku, the moment after that had happened, the guy, the guy, he's distracted, yeah. The kid immediately going to run. And Deku does actually follow after him as he does actually watch the guy try to somewhat recover. The guy's just laying there groaning. And Deku, he feels really bad because he felt that. Now, Deku and this kid do go running in. And they actually do sit down somewhere and start to watch the races. They do actually sit down and find that the races are about halfway over. However, from in here you can see everything. There's TVs everywhere. You, you can see, okay, there's that guy, there's that team, there's the earthbending team. Now, Deku from watching this, he actually is kind of surprised. As the vehicles that are being used, they're like this one, but they're a lot bigger. A full four-man team can fit on top of it. The sails are larger, and there's actually many more. And it does just seem kind of amazing to Deku. Now that he does get a closer look from up here, or at least being able to see on top of those things, not just the bottom of them, they have engines on them, and there's flames coming out of the back. He's seen firebenders blast out behind them, but even then... That's only to give them a bit of a speed boost, an advantage. It's a short burst, if you will. And Deku actually does get caught up in all the surprise. Him and this person, they are just watching this happen. And it's actually kind of funny. The two are both sitting there. And they're at least trying to say that this team's going to win. Well, Deku actually does argue that, no, this team's going to win over here. Now. They actually do enjoy this for about an hour. As you actually have where somebody they do start coming around and checking tickets. Now, Deku, he actually go to look away from the screen as he go to see the person actually walking around looking at tickets. As more people did come in after them. And Deku, yeah. He does try to at least grab the person by their shoulder and try to tell them, we need to go. Hmm? What? It's just getting good. They're on the final lap. No, we need to go. Look. 
Now, the Paris they don't listen, as Decades does finally go to bend his stone as he does actually hit the bottom of their seats. The Paris are actually going to jump a bit before actually turning to Deku. What? You're distracting me from the race. Now, as that actually has happened, there is when the man with a hole puncher, he's actually walking towards the direction. As Deku does just pointers the guy, as the guy does try to ask the two for their tickets. Before the person you just stand there. Yeah, I, I got my ticket. Now. Deku, he does just wait. Okay, he's got to have something for this, right? He's got to have a backup plan. Now. The kid does what any logical con artist would do in this scenario. He just fucking books it. Jumping right over Deku and directly leaping two seats over in front of people. As Deku, he does freeze for a second. He was there. He's gone. Okay, time to run. Now, Deku just tried to follow. The guy trying to chase them down, informing them that they need to stop. Now, Deku and this kid, they just start running around the area. As it's kind of intriguing and at the same time, it's also kind of bad. Deku and this kid are both running fast, and they actually split up. As you do actually have where Deku, whenever him and the kid do split up, Deku, he actually go running down a staircase, so the kid actually go running up. And there actually was where security, they did actually go to follow that kid. And Deku, for a minute, he thought he was safe. Okay, now. Deku does still run down the staircase. However, he does try to listen for footsteps. As whenever Deku, he is still running, he does finally look behind him. And he is just walking backwards. Okay, okay, um, fuck. This is bad. I might have bitten off more than I can chew. Now, as Deku does think that, there actually is where the roof above them does start to open. Deku actually going to look up as, yeah. The race ended. And right now the teams are returning to where the cars are supposed to be stashed. Now. Deku, whenever the teams do start to land, they actually do all see this kid. Some of them actually kind of confused. Uh, kid, are you lost? Uh, yeah, I I'm lost. I I trying to look for the bathroom. Hmm? Kid, the bathroom's on the other side of the arena. R really? I, I didn't see a sign or anything. Hmm? Uh, kid, you're not supposed to be here, are you? What? What makes you say that? Well, because you're actually supposed to be seeing signs to tell you not to come down here. They should have been down the hallway. Uh, really? Uh, I, I didn't see anything posted. Um, I, I'm just going to go now. Now, Deku does try to turn around. As there actually is where Stone actually does directly cover Deku's lower half. And Deku does just at least freeze. Looking down at that. Ah, oh, crap. Now. One of the teams do actually come walking up, informing Deku that they're very sorry, but they can't just let him walk away. Sure, he's a teenager, but he does need to learn that there are consequences to his actions. Now, Deku, whenever the guy does actually come walking up, he does at least try to inform Deku. He was rowdy whenever he was around his age, so he's not going to fault him for Deku just doing one thing. Deku shifting his foot as the stone is turned to sand. And Deku, he doesn't immediately rush forward to try and run through the guy. Now, as this actually does happen, you actually have a waterbender. Whenever Deku did go to run, and at least try to spin around, they did actually try to go to lash out and attack Deku. As Deku, he immediately did go to throw out his hands and go to bring up a wall of earth. Now, these four teams, let's just say, they actually are trying to take on Deku. There's at least 16 people here. And they're all trying to either earthbend, waterbend, firebend, or even airbend. Now, it's kind of surprising to Deku. There are nomads that do exist outside of the traditional temples. And they actually have their own styles of bending from what he doesn't know. But the White Lotus, they would rather him learn the old ways as he does know. Now, there actually is where a firebender, he does actually go to charge up some lightning. I'm going to blast it straight through the wall as the earthbenders, they actually are trying to bury their or destroy the wall to get through. Now, 
Whenever Deku, he actually going to try to run, there actually was where he was halfway to the staircase. Security guards coming down it as they heard the commotion. And there actually was whenever Deku did just stand there and go to turn back, at least halfway in between all of them. And we actually bring up his hands. Okay, kid, you have to turn yourself in. I, I can't. Why not? Now, there actually is whenever a firebender, they actually go to try and blast out fire towards Deku. And Deku, whenever he does see it, he doesn't mean to go to throw out his hand and counter it with wind. Deku actually bring his hand, right hand outwards, and throwing it all the way that way upwards into a left slash. Now, it's like you're trying to smack somebody who's taller than you. That's basically what Deku does do. And whenever that does actually happen, Deku does redirect the flames. Everyone, they do just stand there shocked. Now, the security guards do actually try to rush Deku. As whenever Deku, he actually goes to try and throw his other hand backwards to try and at least use some other form of bending. Yeah. He immediately got pinned to the ground after someone did kick him in the back of the leg. And the racers did at least try to inform the men to stop. Hmm? This kid didn't pay for a ticket. Let go of me! Now, the people who do at least try to inform the security guards. That kid earthbended earlier. Hmm? What? You can't be serious. He's an airbender. Sure, they're rare, but you gotta at least turn him in. Hmm? That kid's the Avatar. What? Now, one of the men who actually have Deku's right arm twisted, they do at least try to ask him if that's true. Yeah, I'm the Avatar. Now, they do actually let go of Deku's right arm. As two men, they do at least try to hold Deku down still. They tell him to try and at least prove it. Deku go and at least hold up his right hand and have flames start pouring out of it. As they do immediately go to let go of him. Now, after that actually has happened, Deku he does get up to his feet. He would actually grab onto his left arm and try to shake off the pain. Ow, ow, ow. So, why is the Avatar watching a race? Hmm? I think you mean why did the Avatar break into a race? Now, Deku does turn back to security. Uh, um, well, you see, the, the, the whole thing is, this is all just a... Now, one of the racers do actually go to speak up. Telling him that, well, telling security, this is all a big misunderstanding. Now, sec the security guard does go to looking back at one of the racers. Asking John if he's really sure that he can really say this kid is supposed to be here. Hmm? Yeah, I invited him. I mean, he's in town, right? I thought he would like to come see us. We always fly overhead. Yeah, I, I mean, I really did. I was thankful for the invite. Yeah, see? So, what happened to your ticket? Oh, I, I, um... I may have misplaced it. I tried talking, but it didn't work. And even then, I got scared. I knew the ticket guy, he, he wouldn't believe me. So, I just kind of ran. Now, the security guard, he does go to look back at John, or, well, Johnny, as he does just stare at him for a second. He can tell that this guy, he's full of shit. There's no way he knew the Avatar was in town. Compared to them, the Avatar is world famous. Now, they both do at least come to somewhat of a mutual conclusion. The Avatar has done a whole lot of good. And from what they do understand, this kid right here? Yeah. He seems like he needs to be able to at least enjoy his life before that crazy journey every Avatar goes on starts. So security does kind of look the other way, while the racers, they at least do talk to Deku. And they do actually show him a bit of a good time. They take him around the track, they actually do let him ride on one of the flying things, or one of the gliders, and they do actually somewhat just give him a shirt and a hat. That are signed by many of them. Now, Deku, he actually had a whole lot of fun. And, while that was going on, you did actually have Incomodoria, who, over at the inn, she was kind of, you know, 
annoyed. Her son, he just seems so disrespectful. He just seems so angry. Why is he like that? And she actually was trying to talk to somebody. She was trying to talk to Deku's teacher. Since he might know Deku the best. And the man, while he was casually sipping some whiskey, he talked about how Deku... He does still seem to be caught up in the fact that he can't waterbend. Huh? Yeah. The kid's still pissed off by that. I mean, granted, he's... You know. So he should be able to do it. But it seems like he's just annoyed. Besides, he's a kid, right? He's 14. He's a teenager. Doesn't he hang out with any friends? Um... Well, there there was some kids back at the airbending temple. Okay. And who else? Well, there... Hmm. I think there was some kids at the Water Tribe. That's it. Um, well, he mainly tried training. And really, that's about it. And how long has he been doing this? Um, he's been doing it for ever since we discovered his bending. Okay, hang on. So, you knew he was the Avatar since birth, right? Yes. And the moment he was able to get up and going, that's when he started his bending training? Well, we actually waited until he was older, around the age of four? Okay, hang on a second. You were telling me you took a kid and all his life he's just been nothing but trying to master the elements. He spends God knows how long on water, probably, let's just say, about a fourth of his life. And you expect him not to get angry whenever he, you know, doesn't have friends he has strict rules to go by? I mean, seriously. What do you expect? What? You were a teenager too, weren't you, Miss Midoriya? Uh, yes, I was. And what did you do anytime your parents were strict with you? Oh, fuck. Now, Inko, she does have a few things click in her head. Deku, he hasn't had friends since he was a four-year-old. That's... Oh, God. No. She does want to talk to the White Lotus. Since Deku, he does need to take some time off. Maybe that's why he can't waterbend? It's about being relaxed, right? So he could just be super stressed out. No. She does want to go and talk to Deku about this. And she has to go to knock on his door and ask Izuku if he wants to talk. Now, it doesn't really work. And there actually is when she has tried to open the door, but it's locked. Now, after a few minutes of trying to get Deku to talk or even pound on the door and just trying to talk to him, there actually was his earthbending teacher, who he did stand up, walk over, and go to bring up his hand. Him holding it outwards, he does spread his fingers. Him just turning his hand at 90 degrees, as a clicking sound can be heard. And he has to go to reach out and open the door. Huh? How did you... Metal bending. Oh, right. Now. She does actually look inside the room. Deku, he's not there. And the window is open. Fuck. Um... I need to make a phone call. Miss Midoriya? What? This is pretty bad. He could have been kidnapped. Miss Midoriya. He, he could have been hurt. He, people know he's staying here. He, God, he's just a kid. He's just, he's just a kid. Hmm? What? He snuck out, Miss Midoriya. Huh? Christ. Inko, right? Yes. Okay. Use some common sense. Please. I've been up for a long time today, I've nearly gotten my shit rocked by your kid, and really right now you're just ruining my mood. 
I'm going to be very honest with you. You guys are way too strict on your son. He's a kid. He's going to sneak out. He's going to do dumb shit. And he's probably going to get himself in trouble. So, don't make a fuss about it. Because then people will know the Avatar is in town. Huh? What are you talking about? Miss Midoriya, it was never advertised your son was in town. We don't do that. We hide where he goes. Oh. Oh, God. I feel stupid. There you go. Now, would you like to have a drink with me while we wait for your kid to get back? Um, well, I don't know. Honestly, I am just kind of worried and... Miss Midoriya, he'll be right back. Besides, he can do three types of bending. I think he'll be fine. Now, Inko, she does reluctantly go to sit down. As she doesn't drink, but she does at least try to wait for Deku. She does want to scream and yell at him when he gets back, but really, she was like that as a kid too. That might just make him do this more. It's, well, not just think about it. They've kind of been neglecting their son. Hisashi's back in Japan, and she did go with him. She went with Deku at least, but Deku hasn't seen his father in years. And she was only around for, well, just the water tribe part. She didn't see her son in nearly half a decade, a little over that. And really, now that she does sit down and try to think about it, and someone's pointed out to her, she's been a terrible mother. Now. You do actually have about two hours later, after this did get pointed out, where Deku did return, and he was actually pretty happy. He was wearing a hat, he did actually have a shirt thrown over his shoulder. As whenever Deku did go to sneak back in, he did actually go to turn his head. And Inko is staying there in the doorway. Fuck. Uh, hey mom, it's a long story, but I, I can kind of... Izuku? Oh crap, she's gonna yell at me. I'm not mad. Hmm? Wait, what? But, there it is. I would really appreciate it if you wanted to just talk about leaving. Hmm? Why? You wouldn't listen to me anyways. What was that? Mom, you don't let me <laughs> be myself. I've asked every day, every year, every week to go see the races. But... <laughs> You don't seem to care. My teachers, they're more willing to take me than you are. If I mastered earthbending, they said they'd take me. But even then, it's just that. I, I had fun today. I met a friend. I acted like a teenager. Really, I just... I don't know about bending, Mom. What am I supposed to do? I'm unable to do one element. And I've never had a break. I take days off, but I just learn about history. I learn math, I learn science, I learn everything else. I don't have fun. I just... I don't know. I'm angry. Now, Inko, she does actually pay attention to her son. Telling him that... She'll talk to the White Lotus and see what she can do. She hasn't been the best of a mother, but she does at least want to show Deku that he does need to at least try to put some trust in her. And she'll try to do the same for him. She's just very worried. Okay, Mom. Just... Thanks... Thanks for not being mad. Now... Inko, she does almost say something, biting her lip as she does almost talk about how she is actually mad. But she basically got, well, chewed out by Deku's teacher, who, sadly, has spent more time with her son than she has. Now, with that being said, I do believe that that is a good point to leave this off of, and I do hope you guys enjoyed. And for the guys who felt that, and you know what I'm talking about, I felt it too. I'm very sorry.